Hi, everyone. Welcome here. Uh, this is the first Ethical Games Conference. We are very happy to host you today. My name is Celia Hoodent. I have a PhD in psychology, and I've been working in the video game industry for quite some time. It's been 15 years, so I'm not in academia anymore. I have a lot of ties with academia, uh, hence why I'm coordinating this um, event with my wonderful colleagues. Um, and this is the first time that we're organizing this this event with a uh, very few volunteers, <laughs> and so we hope you're going to have um, a great time. Um, so, if you want to know a bit more about ethical games, you can consult those um, websites that are uh, shown here: ethicalgames.org, ethicalgamesconference.org, and games.acn.org. Since this conference is organized um, in collaboration with ACN Games Research and Practice. And um, I'm just gonna introduce uh, myself a little bit. I already uh, did that, um, but I've been working in, in uh, ethics and games uh, for a, a little bit, uh, trying to push the boundary uh, here. And I'm joined uh, by my wonderful colleagues, Dr. Fran Blumberg and our Professor Sebastian Dieterling. Um, Sebastian could not be here right at this moment. Um, but Fran is going to introduce herself and introduce Sebastian, and Sebastian has recorded a video, uh, so we're going to show that in a minute. Fran, hi, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, and I'm I'm very delighted to be here. Good morning from New York City, and good day for everyone else. I'm Fran Blumberg, and now I'm a faculty member in the Graduate School of Education at Fordham University. I'm a cognitive developmental psychologist. And I'm new to the game ethics work, but my research for a fair number of years has concerned children's learning in the context of di um, digital games and apps. Um, I'm very delighted um, to be here at this very special meeting of academicians and also the, those in the game industry. So this is a rare meeting of the minds and a, a wonderful opportunity for all of us. What I would also like to do is to introduce um, our, our wonderful colleague, Professor Sebastian Dieterding. And he is a professor at the Dyson School of Design Engineering at Imperial College London. And he is the founding editor-in-chief of the journal ACM Games Research and Practice. Some of you may know him from his academic work on gamification, game-inspired design for human well-being, or the ethics of design for behavior change. He's edited books like The Gameful Word for Role-Playing Game Studies, and he has also been um, had a long industry career as a UX and game designer working for clients such as ABB, Greenpeace, KLM, Novartis, and Supercell. Welcome to all. And I'm going to show a little video then Sebastian recorded for us. Oh, it's going to play. Let's see. Hello, and a warm welcome from me, Sebastian Dieterding and ACM Games Research and Practice, the journal whose logo you see here up above me. Uh, that is co-sponsoring this event and that I have the pleasure to edit together with my colleague, Kenny Mitchell. Um, if you don't know the journal, uh, it's just launched in March 2023. It's published by the Association for Computing Machinery. That's where the ACM comes from, which is the world's largest educational and scientific computing society, non-for-profit that runs many major academic computing conferences and journals across the world. Uh, and it's co-published our journal with EDC Press which is a scholarly publisher for games and entertainment technology out of Carnegie Mellon University. As the subtitle of our journal says, Research and Practice, our mission is to bridge games, academia, and industry across disciplines and specialisms. We want to create a forum, a dialogue, a, a clearinghouse for the state of the art that's relevant to both people working in the industry and working in research as authors and as readers. And the ethics of game design and development are perfect case in point for why this kind of dialogue is needed, I think, because they touch very many fields, right? Philosophical ethics, psychology, sociology, business models, work organization, law and government design. Uh, and a lot of work across these fields is pretty fragmented, actually. And secondly, there is a lot of noise on the topic out there in the media sphere. And 
arguably that is one of the reasons why game developers, but also policymakers and players and journalists uh, need help from uh, academic researchers to sort out what is a justified concern and what is just an unjustified moral panic. And vice versa, as researchers, I think if we really want to understand and help improve the world, right, improve the kinds of games that, that we make, the kinds of games that people play, uh, we benefit greatly from talking with developers in order to understand the realities of making games. So I personally learned more about the economic realities and pressures of ad bidding and how they shape game and monetization of design in free to play games uh, by five minutes of talking with Marcus Montola at Playsome than I ever learned by reading anything in the academic literature. In fact, I didn't see it ever mentioned anywhere in the academic literature. It's just one example. So when Celia approached us with the idea for an event and a publication on the ethics of game design and development, we were immediately on board because it, it aims to create, as I said, exactly the kind of dialogue that we want to help foster and create. Now, this was an experiment in many respects. As I said, the journal is new, our team is new. Uh, having a joint conference and a journal publication together is a pretty new format. So we were pretty unsure whether it would work. And I have to say it worked remarkably well. If anything, the only hitch was that we were positively overwhelmed by the number of submissions. So uh, I want to take this opportunity to particularly thank our great guest editor team and our reviewers for helping us work through the total of 73 submissions which we received. And for those who care about these numbers with 24 presentations today, that makes an acceptance rate of about 32%. And uh, the process of putting this together was really, really interesting and informative for me, because on the one hand, the moment we did it, we heard critiques and worries by academics that even speaking to members of industry was risking our impartiality, and was a case of potential ethics washing, putting something together with people from industry. And then on the other hand, the second we released a call for papers on social media, we got angry responses by some uh, industry representatives saying that running an event that focuses squarely on the ethics of game design and talking about things like ethically problematic game design patterns without talking about all the good that games bring was very hostile and very one-sided. So. I think by virtue of the fact that we got critique from both sides, we managed threading the needle um, pretty well. Um, to close, I want just to uh, let you know that many of the presentations you will hear in the course of the coming two days will appear as a special issue uh, with our journal in the second half of 2024. So keep your eyes out for that. And if that has piqued your interest, you can just go to games.acm.org now to have a look at all of the issues that we've already published with pieces by leading academics, but also industry voices like Ref Coaster or Dan Cook. And if you have an idea for a piece or even a special issue or another conference or anything else, do contact me. You see my email up there, uh, eic games at acm.org. Always looking forward to hearing from you. And with that, um, I hope you all have a great two days and I hand back to Celia and to Fran. So that was the message from uh, Sebastian. Hello, and, and a warm uh, welcome from me, again. Sebastian, <laughs> in ACM game. All right. Um, so with this, we would like to uh, thank our editorial board, uh, especially since we, like Sebastian was saying in this uh, video, we had a lot of submissions and we didn't have a lot of time. Uh, so we had to find all the re reviewers. So a big thanks to our uh, wonderful uh, editorial board, to all the reviewers, um, and to all the speakers, and um, all the volunteers. Uh, Claire, who is here, or is uh, happy, um, happy on us now, is, um, is uh, really waking up super early <laughs> to help us uh, host this uh, day. So thank you, everyone. This uh, Day could not happen without all of you because it's been a it's been quite the journey. Um, so why ethical games? So like I said, I was saying earlier, um, I I come from academia, but I uh, went into the game industry uh, quite some time um, a few years ago, like fifteen years ago. I initially was an employee at Ubisoft, then I worked at uh, LucasArts, and I worked at Epic Games. Ever since twenty seventeen, I'm an independent consultant. 
Um, so I work independently, I consult, and I do a lot of master classes and training sessions to explain uh, what I do. So what I do is user experience. Um, and user experience is, is all about making sure that uh, the people who are using a product, including video games, are having the best experience possible. And uh, why uh, starting an ethical game initiative? It's because we're seeing a lot of um, concerns around games. It's really all over uh, the media. So like Sebastian was, was uh, saying, it's, it's hard to understand what is a legitimate concern and uh, what is more a, a moral panic. Um, and it's really important because video games are art um, and over 2 billion people on the planet are playing games. So it's it's very present in lives. And, and it's really important to try to understand what's going on if there are potential harms. We need to understand them better so we can uh, protect people. And, and that's the reason why a lot of people in UX, such as myself, um, are interested into ethics and also interested into diversity and inclusion because um, benevolence is really one of the pillars of UX. UX is all about uh, improving people's lives with technology. Uh, so when we talk about games, again, we play games to have fun, um, but we want to make sure that we protect players' best interests. And if there are issues, we need to understand them, acknowledge them, and, and fix them. And so that's why a lot of people in the UX community are uh, working on these, uh, um, these notions. And a lot of people from the game industry are also very interested into that uh, because many of us consider games as art and we are passionate about what we do. We care about games, we care about the players. Um, and so we wanna make sure that everyone can have fun um, and that we can identify issues if there are some so that we can address the concerns. Um, so in 2019, um, they, there's a lot of people talking about this. It's not just me, of course. Um, but we, I, I had a um, uh, a talk at GDC, which is the Game Developers Conference. It's a big uh, developer con game developers conference um, that happens every year in San Francisco. That generated a bunch of discussions. Um, and then during the pandemic, we had a roundtable with my colleagues, Kate Edwards, Carlos Figueredo, and Kat Lowe, um, to talk about it. Could we have a code of ethics in the game industry? And if so, what it, uh, would it look like? So this is when we started to try to put together something, like it was a draft, uh, just an idea uh, to put something out there. And this is how Ethical Games uh, started. So you can take a look at ethicalgames.org. Uh, you will see a draft that we put together back then um, to try to figure out, you know, what would a code of ethics for the game industry look like? Uh, and the purpose is to improve ethics for video games, for the communities, playing games, the players, and also at the workplace, um, because we also care about the people making games. And so we have like two big sets of guidelines. Again, it's a draft <laughs> at that point. Um, one set of guidelines for the benefit of players and uh, the community, so make sure that um, uh, community and events are safe for everyone. I'm looking to player safety in online games, um, game design, and also marketing, business intelligence, monetization, and also guidelines for the game industry workers, so company values, workers' protection, diversity, inclusion, and impact on the environment. Um, but what we care about is for those guidelines to be evidence-based. Hence, uh, what we're doing uh, today, looking uh, at academia to help us build those guidelines so they can be evidence-based and we can address those issues efficiently. So that's the whole point of today. Um, so I hope you will have a great conference. We'll have a lot of uh, uh, content. Um, we're also going to have a roundtable tomorrow uh, that is closing the event. If you would like to ask questions or, or give some comments, you can fill out uh, the survey. So um, I think Claire might uh, be able to put that in the chat, uh, but you can answer the survey so we can look at the questions that you have and hopefully approach these during the round table tomorrow. Please respect the code of conduct. Uh, it's important that everybody feel safe and be able to discuss uh, here. And that's about it for me. So have a great conference. And we're going to start with our
first speakers.